Brett referring to yesterday's race and watching it from start to finish on the broadcast. Yep. Did you miss it, or did you think it was not worth it? Man, you're, I don't think a lot of people are going to like this answer because I'm going to break down oh boy. what my struggle is with super speedway racing because I've been trying to figure it out. Because I love plate racing, super speedway racing. It's literally my favorite thing to do while I'm at the racetrack. But from my perspective, super speedway racing in general has become way too predictable. It used to be we didn't know who was going to work well with who and who was going to pit when and who was going to push who. And now the OEMs have precedence. And then the team orders have precedence. And then the stage breaks tell us when we know yellows are coming. So when I used to go into this race, Casey, with, with Elliot Sadler, with Jeff Burton, with Clint Boyer, with Justin Haley, um, it changed. When, when Elliot and I would go, it was, there were so many unknowns. And then the tandem thing happened, and you needed a dancing partner. And then we undid the tandem thing, and then the OEMs got so involved during my time at Stuart Haas with Clint Boyer. And Ford went down there, and Stuart Haas dominated that race. I mean, we kicked our tails that day. So when I, I watch this race now, I'm able to predict a lot of things that are going to happen. I'm going to be able to predict the, the window of, of – the, the manufacturers pitting together. And so I, I just missed the, the unpredictability of it, Freddie, if that makes sense. Cause there's, we used to go on this thing and go, I don't know what the hell is going to happen for 188 laps. Yeah. I mean, we're, you know, I'm sure we'll get into the, the package itself more, but yeah, there's no, you know, it's, it's, it, you're kind of locked, locked in where you get in. Everybody has pre, you know, I, everybody, you see all the spotters there early Sunday morning or, or Saturday because they have meetings with their manufacturers um, you know, everybody on the roof stands together, manufacturer based. It's just, it's, that's what it comes down to now. And, and these guys have packs where they're going to work together until a certain point on the last lap. Um, and it's just where, you know, like you said, like everybody, Toyota's yesterday, first stage, for example, we could run till about lap 35, 36. So ideally we want to be the third group down pit road, just you know, get, don't let, you know, be on there by ourselves, safe, first stop, get through, get done. Um, nobody pit yet. So we had a, a hard number of, all right, we got to come this lap. So we came and then you see a couple laps later, the Chevys come and then a couple laps later, all the Fords come. And, you know, it, it's just, it, that's all it is. And especially with the stage breaks, you know, okay, I can, uh, the, the biggest thing here, and I don't know why we don't address this as like we did at the road courses. They've, we're basing everything off the stage break because we know, that if we just pit here, we can get to the stage break. And then we can fill it up at the stage break. And then we're going to do this. We're going to run X amount of laps. Then we can pit here, just put enough gas in to make it to the stage break. And we're going to fill up at the stage break again. If you don't have them stage breaks, you're, you're running the race completely different. And it's, and it, you know, it could be open up a bigger window of, so, you know, sometimes we see the Chevys pit super early in a run. They'll, they'll come down 10 laps before everybody get their group up and then try to get single file and, make up time on the big pack while we're, you know, while we're still out there. So I don't know, like I wish that we would do the same thing we do at road courses, get rid of them stage breaks, and it, it would kind of lend itself to a little bit more unpredictability, I think. Yeah, I don't like the stage breaks at plate racing. I just think it, you're, there's no what ifs. There's no, it's like, hey, we're going to pit here. We're going to pit a lap later, and then you got a group that pits a few laps later, and then it's right back. To almost the same thing. My, my least favorite thing on top of what I just said, it being too predictable, is I watched Dale Earnhardt go from, I believe, 18th to first in two laps to win that race one time. You Golly. can't do that now unless yeah, there's there a big rack. No track track position that. is almost as important as it is at somewhere like a Martinsville. I'm not telling you that things can't happen and the seas can't part and you can't make a move out of sheer luck. But once you're in line and lined up, it's, it's a track position race. Yeah. It, so you see the cars like, it's a, it's, it's so weird because you got like the you had the HMS cars. They literally just rode around on the bottom, not even trying to get to the front. They did their pit cycle. They timed it right, got everything right. They're back to the, they're to the front now. Like I want to see guys that are good plate racers be able to make moves to get to the front. And I didn't see any guy that's a really good plate racer make a move that sprung him to the front. He got if he got lucky. Um, <clears throat> Bubba jumped up into the second lane or third lane one time and got third lane, I think. Third. And, yeah, y'all pulled and the got, train. He got pushed in like a lap and a half to the lead, and then that was it for the third lane. It fell back. Bubba got up to the front. Like, But there's no way guys like 
Joey and Brad and, and the guys like that can make moves from the back and, and knife through there. There's no middle lane. Mm. There's no way to there's no way to take a run to the outside, get some cars, and then get back in line. Everybody, it is a 200 mile an hour parade lap, and nobody can go anywhere. I mean, Chase Elliott, respectable super speedway racer, he can't make his way. I mean, none of the guys that are good, the cream cannot rise to the top there without getting super lucky. They yeah. can't make their moves that they're skilled at doing. Yeah, and it the the you know to, to talk about the third lane, you know. It would form up a couple times. You'd see it, and they would they were able to get to maybe the you know mid pack at best at most of the time. Yeah. But then all that did was split the middle lane up, and then made the bottom more dominant. You could see like the Toyotas. We were all lined up on the second lane, and we could run even with the leaders, run even with the leaders forever. If the third lane ever formed, and it was you know it was outside of maybe the ninth or tenth place car in the second lane it would break that second lane up and we would just continue to lose spots. We'd get cleared by four or five guys on the bottom versus being neck and neck with the leader. So, you know, uh, I don't know what the answer is, but this package just isn't, it just doesn't lend itself. And, and to your point, like it doesn't matter. Like, you know, like used to be when we would go to these races, um, it, you know, Bubba and I, you know, we were, we were pretty good at this when the old car, you know, and, um, obviously, we're not bad at it. Oh, well, maybe a questionable after last <laughs> like yesterday, but you were you were good at it for like five hundred point one miles. Uh, but you know, it was it was you know like there's it it just you know situational. Like we shook out in the front, we could stay there and know how to maintain that position. But if we were buried in twentieth, we were going to be buried in twentieth we all day. We were like, buried in twentieth, you know, like day. that's just the way that package is. So it's you know it, it, it's i don't know i think it's probably really low down i heard they had good meetings about the short track package this week um all the drivers seem a little bit encouraged about that i would assume short tracks and everything else is kind of a lot higher priority because we only run four speedway races a year or i guess six if you count atlanta now but you know that, that's actually I, more I, I short think, tracks than we run if you think about yeah, it because they I, took a bristol away i mean to me it goes back you look at martinsville those things look like they're stuck there's no like there the barely they barely slid the rears when they're throttled up. I mean, tell me could, back in the day, could you downshift at Martin's in the middle of the corner? No. And just hammer down. That's what Tyler Reddick was doing. He's downshifting in the middle of the corner, and when he hammers down, he's going full throttle. So he's take, doing. He got 600 horsepower and a big <clears> tire. Well, these guys like why are the Xfinity cars so much harder to drive than it? you see John Hunter? He, what did he do in the Xfinity race? He came all the way to the top and got loose. Cup cars are not getting loose. The only time. They fight handling issues there a lot. I mean, the 54 was fighting to lose, but you, but he was still up there racing. But like, you don't see guys. Um, most times when we have a wreck there, it's just guys swiping bumpers or throwing bad blocks. Like the Xfinity cars, at least you can manipulate air a little bit more. And like John Hunter, he come all the way to the top and got loose and spun out by himself. A cup car is not even close to doing that. Well, there's times when a track gets changed, like a Charlotte, like a Texas, and it makes the racing suffer. This track is not the problem. This track no. is four lanes wide everywhere, five lanes wide at times, and you're able to run two by two, and that's it. It's not the track's fault. It's this car's fault, and I hope the fans use their voice to make it known because there's a lot of empty seats there, and people are going to stop watching, and this should be one of the most exciting products of the year. And I'm going to be honest with you, I'd have had more fun watching Freddie rub his Cross cheese grater than watching stage one again. I wouldn't think I would enjoy that at all, <laughs> actually. Yeah. And listen, I, I, I would agree. There's going to be proponents <laughs> that say, like, oh, well, you know, your old package, you know, all you guys did was get single file and ride around the top. But we got single file right around the top because it was unpredictable and the cars were on edge and, and massive runs were coming. But at least at that point, you like, if, you, if I'm running mid pack in that package, I know that if we get a couple guys together, we can do something, we can make progress. If yeah. This car, you're you're buried wherever you're at. Denny like, would. As soon as yeah. Denny got five or six guys, he'd do it. He would do it five times before he actually got enough to people. He'd get some people, drive past 10, 12 cars, wouldn't be enough. They'd fall back all the way to the back. And two laps later, who's the only guy in the bottom again? Here comes Denny. I mean, it was relentless until he got enough people. But guess what? If he finally got enough people, it would make it work. So The only major unknown for me is when, when is the big one going to happen. And the problem is – for me, once you take the white, and this is where I think Bubba got himself in trouble yesterday, and Blaney, because they're both being super aggressive. Bubba is blocking very aggressively. Blaney is trying to pass him very aggressively. But at that point that you take the white flag, you're only racing until they wreck. You're not racing back to the checker. Yeah. 
How many races came back to the checker? Yeah. Does Atlanta count? <laughs> I mean, it, 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 it's that's the only I unknowns wish they for me. Atlanta, that'd have been great. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, the, you'd be in the playoff. <clears throat> you would have. I um, like there's just. Or if no, you'd have done what Bubba done, you might have been in the playoff. Or it, or head on into the wall. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't. It, the only time I think they're going to wreck in these scenarios is when the intensity picks up and when there's something to race for at the end. That other otherwise. What's I don't the know. Point? We're but not going to see the aggressive blocking like at the end with Bubba on lap 15 of the race. We're not going to see it. Yeah. And there's no reason to see it that anyway. But, like, they're, they're, these guys are literally it's the most controlled two-by-two two at 200 mile an hour that I've seen. 